because we're not done growing. All of us are called to continue each day to live like Christ. Here's the challenge for us. We want you to take a moment to recognize someone who has shared their life with you, has shown Christ to you. It could be a friend, it could be a neighbor, it could be somebody in this church. How has somebody showed Christ to you in the recent week or month or whatever? I want you to write that person's name down on the heart. And even if you want to write the story of what you saw in them, write that down. Okay? You've got a little bit of time before it's due, but you need to be thinking about that through the service. And then on the apple, what we're asking you to do is how can God use you this week to be Christ to somebody else? We have all been given gifts. We've been given the fruit of the call to be fruit of the Spirit. How will you this week, how is God calling you in your life where you are to be Christ? We want you to think about that. And what's one way you commit this week to be fruit? And so we want you to write that down. Okay? And then during the offering, uh, when the offering plates come, we want you to put this sheet of paper into the offering plate. Okay? But at the end of the service, during Great I Am, we're, we're going to be, the ushers are going to bring these down. They're going to put these on the tree that you see behind you that Miss Leanne Purnell did such a beautiful job of doing for us. This, what you see up here, is what 9 o'clock uh, the recreation service did. And when we're done here, the entire body of Christ at College Park will be represented on this growing tree. And we want you to know how thankful we are for you in all the many ways that you help us grow so that we can all go out and be in the body of Christ. Welcome to worship. We are one body knit together.
they got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables. Verse 31 and 32 says, He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all your seeds, yet when it grows, it is the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and perch in its branches.
opportunity to fine tune our people's skills, to practice sharing our faith, and to learn how to help others in any way we can. Just as the mustard seed needs proper soil and nutrients to grow, we need the church and our fellow believers to help us grow. Although sometimes we feel that our small contribution won't matter, and that we don't know enough to share our faith, if we spend time with our fellow believers and make the commitment to grow together, we, like the tiny mustard seed, can become something magnificent, giving new life to people through Jesus, providing for the needs of others, and rapidly spreading the word of Christ outside the walls of the church.
I am the true vine, my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does not bear fruit he prunes, so that will be even more fruitful. You are already clean of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, he can be nothing.
So I came back home and I came to this first. I really thought about it and I realized I had to get reconnected to the vine. After that trip, I learned that every single word in this verse is true. And whether you think so or not, you can very easily become less fruitful and start to break away from Jesus. If that ever, hap if that ever happens to you, I encourage you to read over this passage. It will help you out a lot, and maybe it will become as special to you as it is to me.
bow your head. Dear Lord, thank you for bringing us together here today, and thank you for the many gifts you've granted us. Lord, please watch over us this week and allow us to be able to successfully spread your word outside the walls of the church. We ask you to join us as a community and a body of Christ, and we ask you to support us and call upon others who may not know you to worship with us and focus on you. In your heavenly name we pray. Amen. <coughs> Going to Jamaica and Garden City and 
finally catching up to my dad. Though my height has fluctuated all my life, one thing had It's the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the gentleness, and self-control that this church has taught me. In God's word, it says in Colossians chapter 5, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. <coughs> Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. These things are the fruit of the Spirit. These things are what this church has given me for the past 17 years of my life. <coughs> Why am I telling you this? Yeah. I mean, you've already given it to me, so what next? <laughs> See, we often come here to get away from all those worldly things, to get away from everything, but we don't cower in fear at giving love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self control to a strong little brown haired kid at a church. But we do when we go outside of here. We cower whenever we're faced with the opportunity to give those same fruit to those outside of here. Now, I'm not, I'm not putting you down. I want to give you the highest praise for what you've given me. But I also want to ask the highest of favors. I want you to go out and do and give what you've given to me every day to those who need it. Because there are other scrawny little brown haired kids out there other than me. So show the love, the joy, the peace, the patience, the kindness, the goodness, faithfulness, the gentleness, self-control that you've shown me inside College Park for the past 17 years. Because, after all, God showed us the greatest love whenever he gave his only son to die on the cross for our sins. So go out into God's creation and continue to grow with him. He may not grow to six feet on a good day, but show the others in the world the fruit of the Spirit. Thank you.
powerful thing to watch the people of God be the people of God. We get a chance to see that on a weekly basis, on a daily basis. I am thankful for all the examples that you see up here. So many people who give and give and give. The examples that you give to our children and to our teenagers. I am thankful for the people of California. Who believe that it is their mission to raise the next generation. But as you can see, they are not the church of tomorrow, they are the church of today. Because they have led us to the very throne of God. Thank you for what you provide these teenagers through budget funds, through barbecue sales, dinner and a show in a month. All the many ways that you pray for our youth, that you love them. But most importantly, you show Christ. Thank you. Thank you for the way that you love them. And as you can see, through the prayers, through the songs, through the messages, Christ's love is getting in to the world because of what you have done. But I'm reminded, working with this amazing group, hearing the stories, the things that they struggle with, the things that their friends struggle with, we need Christ for them. And so we need you to be Christ where you are more than them. And so the challenge is before us. To use the gift that God has given to each of us at work, at school, at the Y, at the restaurants, to be Christ. That is our challenge. That is my challenge. And as I leave these doors, at each step that I take, I become more like Him. Growing in to being like Christ. That is a challenge that has so clearly been given this morning. And I'm thankful for this group and the ones who are able to join us at 9 o'clock. I'm thankful for the way that they trust me and they put up with me. I'm thankful for the patience they show me with all the text messages I send to them, reminding them when to be at church, ready to lead worship. These young people sacrifice a lot. Whether it's you turn to the extra hours of worship, or the ones who serve in our bus station ministry, the ones who work in our preschool and our children's ministry, so many of our great teenagers who I am blessed to be a part of their lives. I thank them. I thank you for our leaders. Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, who pour into these teenagers week after week after week. Many times wondering, am I making a difference? Sunday school leaders, Sunday night leaders, Wednesday night leaders, you are making a difference. I'm thankful to the people who run our sound board, run our lights, run our computers, that help proclaim God's word. We could not do this without them. To the ones who provide us visuals, like the tree behind us. Thank you. To our staff. Thank you. You mean more than you know. 
God has called in us to make a difference. Will we make a difference this week? That is our challenge. Thank you for coming this morning. Thank you for being a part of worship. And we pray that God spoke to you specifically. And as Tiffany comes now, she's going to have a, a closing prayer. We ask that as you leave this place, you go to Christ's name, share his love everywhere you go. Thank you for coming. Follow this week and make a huge impact.